Hey gang, AV here and welcome to my video response to Loki Goblin and Hero Hunter and Captain Cummings and anybody else that's interested in the uh, the whole first appearance of Spidey's Black Costume debate slash Venom slash first appearances in general and so on and so forth. Uh, I just wanted to throw my two cents in and my two cents actually turned into probably a dollar or two. Uh, way too much uh, I have to say about this subject for me to actually type it out in the comment section so video response was definitely the way to go um, first of all uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, Captain Cummings uh, no offense man but I, I, I I'm not the type I don't prescribe to the first chronological appearance of a character or whatever as their actual first appearance. That just does not make sense in comics, if you think about it. I mean, comics are anything but chronological. I mean, how many times does Captain America flash back to World War II? Or if you read any of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, all that stuff happened a thousand years from now. So, I mean... <laughs> Does that mean that they haven't actually appeared yet? I mean, it just, it, it doesn't work in comics. Uh, you can't really do that. Um, a perfect example of this is uh, Wolverine. Um, completely uh, putting off the whole debate of between his first cameo in Hulk 180 and his first full appearance in 181. I'll, t I'll touch on that in a minute or two. Um, Let's just talk about the fact that his first full appearance has been widely considered to be in Hulk 181. I don't have that book anymore. I used to, believe it or not, but that's a story for a different time. So I can't really show that book off to you. But if we are talking chronologically, I can show you that book. And the good news is that if you do prescribe to a character's first chronological appearance as their first genuine appearance... Well, then the good news is that most people watching this will have it as well. It was origin number one. I mean, bar none, hands down, that is the first, or I'm sorry, the earliest appearance of Wolverine. Or Patch, or <laughs> Logan, or James Hewlett, or whatever the hell you want to call him. I'm being facetious now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I mean, without a doubt, that is the earliest recorded appearance of Wolverine. But nobody really considers that his first appearance because it isn't. He was around for decades before this ever came out. So this is considered his origin. And the same holds true for um, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number 8. And if you actually have been to have a graded copy of that book You'll see, let me see if I can get it there without the glare. You'll see that actually CGC denotes this as the origin of the alien symbiote that eventually becomes Venom. They don't call it the first appearance, they call it what it is, the origin of the costume. Unfortunately, I do not have graded copies of the next two books, but if I did, you would see that CGC denotes both of these books as a tie for the first appearance of the black costume. You've got Marvel Team Up number 141 and Amazing Spider-Man 252. Both of these comics came out the same day. And, ironically enough, most people completely forget about this book. They don't even, they don't consider this the first appearance of the, co of the costume. Even though it came out the same day as this be perfectly honest with you, until I was looking for a graded copy of 252 online and I was reading the labels on one of the ones I saw on eBay, I didn't even realize that this came out the same day. And it took another month or two after that to even realize I even had this book. <laughs> I mean, nobody really considers this the money book. They all consider that to be. Although, technically speaking, it's a tie for the first appearance of the black costume because this is the first time the black costume ever showed up. And 
that brings up another good point uh, between what constitutes a first appearance versus a cameo. Um, both of these books, this one a hell of a lot more so than that one, but both of these books actually take the time and show a few panels to explain not only uh, to show off the new costume, but to show off what the new costume can do and what makes it different. And the fact that it can actually change its color and its shape, the fact that it generates its own webbing, so on and so forth. Um, both of these books take the time to introduce the reader to the costume. Another couple first appearances, and these two are undisputed for a simple reason. Just like Amazing Spider-Man 252 and Marvel Team-Up 141, both of these comics were the very first time that the She-Hulk ever appeared or the Guardians of the Galaxy ever appeared. And both of these books took the time to introduce the reader to both, to all those characters. Like, so this is the first appearance and origin of She-Hulk. This is the first appearance and origin of the Guardians of the Galaxy. But it's not always that cut and dry. Good example of that is this. And this brings me back to the whole Wolverine, Hulk 180 and 181 debate. This is the first time readers ever saw Taskmaster. He showed up on the very last page of this book. But this is considered to be his first appearance. Or, I'm sorry, his first full appearance. And here's what the difference is. He only showed up for one panel. He was kind of a teaser. You know, like, just showed up, surprise, here he is, you'll find out who he is next issue. This actually took the time to explain who he was and what he could do and why it was such a threat. And that's why that is the money book. Because even though he technically first appeared in this as a cameo on the very last page in that panel, this was the book that actually introduced him to the readers. So, with that being said, that's why Hulk 181 is the money book and not Hulk 180, even though 180 is the one that we actually got our first glimpse of Wolverine. It's 181 that we actually saw how much of a badass he was by taking on the Hulk. Now that being said, you've got this classic trilogy right here for the Venom. First appearance in the shadows in, one, in uh, 298. First appearance on the last page of 290, 299 and the first full appearance of Venom in 300. Same holds true with these. This was a teaser. This was another teaser. That was the first full appearance. That was the first time you were actually introduced to the character. And that is why that is the major money book. This one is still valuable because it was McFarlane's first work on the title, not because we saw Venom in the Shadows, although for hardcore Venom fans that is a relevant aspect to that book. Uh, this one, of course, was his first cameo and first full appearance. That's why that's the, fir that's, why that's the money book, it's because that's the first time we actually saw who Venom was learned about the character, learned why he was such a threat, and learned what he could do. It's also Venom's origin. So, I can understand why this is such a confusing topic for everybody. I mean, because it's not always cut and dry. I mean, it's not always the first appearance and origin of a character at the same time. It doesn't always happen that way. And, uh... Uh... Oh, what the hell was I going to say? Oh, and, uh... As far as cameos are concerned, you got to look at it like this. I mean, it's the same as the Marvel movies. Um, 
We just saw the Avengers. You wait until after the credits, you get a glimpse of Thanos. You weren't introduced to Thanos, you just got a glimpse of Thanos. And I can prove that because, I mean, I'm a comic guy and I work in a building filled with dozens of people who aren't comic people. <laughs> and after that movie came out, I can't tell you how many people walked up to me and asked me, who the hell was the purple guy? Because oh, They had to ask because the movie didn't tell us. And the only reason why I knew was because I read comics before, you know. So uh, it's the same thing here. I mean, it's just a teaser. A cameo is just a teaser. It's just to whet your appetite and give you, make you interested in the next issue that's about to come out and after that. It doesn't really constitute a first appearance because you're not actually being introduced to the character. So anyway, uh, that was my two cents or my couple of bucks, however you want to look at it. Uh, I hope I uh, helped to clear things up for you guys or at least answered a few questions. I'm sure I didn't answer all of them. Um, oh, and while I'm on the subject, I may as well uh, jump into what I was trying to say with the, uh, the Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars action figures. Uh, they came out from Battelle. Uh, or, um, Mattel, not Patel. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> um, and uh, from what I understand, uh, the people that designed the character, the the characters for the toy line, um, some of them did not receive proper artwork before they started designing the figures from the uh, from Marvel Comics, or. They just took the liberty of designing characters that they could more easily manufacture, or whatever. Uh, I'm not ex I'm not exactly sure of all the details, but the rumor has it that because the uh, preliminary figures that had come out, specifically the ones for Doctor Doom and Spider Man, did not match the traditional look for those two characters. Um, Jim Shooter decided to actually write those costume changes into the story as the series progressed. Um, of course, you can always argue that that uh, that toy line did come out with a standard classic looking Spider-Man action figure as well, but I'm almost positive that the classic red and blue character or costume for that character was released after the black one. Now granted, I was very young when those came out, like six I think I was when those figures hit the stands or hit the pegs so I don't remember all the details but um, a little digging online I'm sure we can figure it out but that's the rumor I'd heard that uh, because the toy line had screwed up with a couple of the character designs Jim Shooter in order to make those toys more relevant actually wrote those costume changes into the story um, but anyway that's what I was that's what I wanted to throw in about that I hope I cleared up uh, what I think of, at least, as a first appearance and why some books are worth more than others. And anyway, uh, I love debates like this, guys. Thank you so much for bringing this up. I love this kind of stuff. Um, but anyhow, uh, this has been AV. If you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.